Hello ladies and gentlemen, what's up? And welcome back to another episode of Not Phenomenal Views, but Nostalgic Videos. Now it has been a long time since I have made one. I think my last episode of uh, Nostalgic Videos was Toy Story, uh, if I'm correct, which by the way, that's on my YouTube channel. Uh, I just got done watching a movie that came out in 2002 that I was so obsessed with as a kid. I, I think this movie came out when... This movie came out in 2002. I can't remember how old I was, but I knew, but I know as soon as I seen the first commercial for it, I was like, Mom, take, can you please take me to see this movie? Please take me to see this movie. What's the rating? PG-13. Well, there's a reason it's PG-13. We'll see. Movie comes out. My dad takes me to the very first ever... Bum -ba -da -dum! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the very first Spider-Man movie. Now, in comparison to... The Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man with Spider-Man with the original Spider-Man. In my opinion, these films are equal, even though this is a remake and this is the original. Now, there's a lot of people who will say Andrew Garfield is a better Spider-Man. Now, in my personal opinion, he's a better Spider-Man because Andrew Garfield has that look that he's Peter Parker and he's Spider-Man, and he makes the wise cracking jokes like Spider-Man should. But when I start, when I watched this film again, and I seen Tobey Maguire, I was like, "There's Spider Man. There's a there's Peter Parker." Like, like when I first started watching this movie, I was like, "I don't see Tobey Maguire. I don't see an actor. I see Peter Parker, and I see Spider Man." Now, I'm not gonna lie. I prefer. Hold on, just one second. I prefer this Spider-Man costume over this one. Now, I know you're going to say, well, Nick, they look the same. Well, that's true, and yet at the same, at the same, it's, it's kind of not. Because this one, this Spider-Man outfit, along with this one, was created, and we actually see them. We don't really see Peter create the suit in this one, but we see him drawing the designs out for it. In the remake, we see him draw out the designs for the Spider-Man suit, and we see him make it. That's one of the reasons I like this over this, but that's a totally different story. However, I do not like this Spider-Man outfit because it doesn't look like it was created by him. And no, it doesn't have to... They don't always have to show him creating the outfit, but just the fact of the matter that, like... It just seems like it was given to him instead of him actually creating it. But with this one and the Amazing Spider-Man, not only the fact that they show us, they show us him designing and creating the suit. Actually, no, like the point I'm trying to make is, it looks more realistic and instead of more like a movie. But now, as you all know, the Spider-Man is a story of Peter Parker who gets bit by a radioactive spider and he gets Spider-Man powers. Now. One of the main things that everyone prefers the Amazing Spider-Man over this is the fact that Spider-Man does not have web shooters. In the original comics, he has the web shooters, which they did that in the remake. But now, this was the very first adaptation of Spider-Man, or at least the very first one I had ever seen. And so, I didn't personally mind it, like with, um... Like in Batman Begins or in uh, the Arkham games, you see Batman use the grapple gun, but in this, Batman shoots the grapple gun and attaches it to his belt. Now, I got told that that's how Batman did it in the comics or in the TV show. He would shoot the belt and then, or he would shoot the gun and he would put it on the belt and the belt would fly him up. And now, they switch things around in the Arkham games. It's the grapple gun. In Spider-Man, the web fluid comes out of his hand, out of, out of his wrists, instead of from a machine. Or instead of them coming out from a machine. It doesn't really bother me. As long as the premise of Spider-Man is there, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I think Sam Raimi did a really good job with this. Now, this film got a lot of things right. It gave us the relationship between Peter and Harry, that friendship. It gave us the relationship between Harry and his father. How Harry is trying so much 
to impress his father, Norman Osborn. We see how they got the character of Norman right. They got the character of the Goblin right, but they just made him look silly. Now, I'm going to say that my biggest pet peeve with this movie is they never show us how Norman got the Goblin mask. We see where he got the outfit from in the glider. It was an Oscorp experiment. When we see Oscorp for the first time, we see a dude in the glider with this kind of headset thing on, but we don't see where he got the mask from. And when I, I was looking online and I, was, and I asked the question, where did he get the helmet from? And there was a lot of answers. It was like, well, maybe it was one of his tribal masks because we see that Norman has a lot of the masks on, on the wall. Um, that was one of the questions that they never answered and it really ticks me off because it makes me wonder where did you get the goblin helmet oscorp created the guy the glider oscorp created the suit but nothing about the helmet and i guess that just kind of makes me feel like it's incomplete now as you all know the amazing spider-man series is done there's no more they're not going to make any more amazing spider-man but you know what are you going to do let's have a moment of silence okay uh Tobey Maguire as being Peter Parker. I think he does fit the identity of Peter Parker. He's a nerd. He acts like a nerd. But they do a little... I've been kind of demeaning the film, saying that with Andrew Garfield, they showed us more of him being a nerd instead of just telling us he was a nerd. And this one, they do show a bit more. It was a while since I had seen this movie. But nonetheless, I would have to say this is my favorite Spider-Man film and, you know, a lot of people say, well, Tobey Maguire wasn't a good Spider-Man. You know what? I will I will agree he was a better Peter Parker than Spider-Man, but for some reason, he looks the part of Spider-Man. He To me, he looks like Spider-Man. When I see him putting on the mask, I see Spider-Man. I don't see someone in a costume. I see Spider-Man. Just like with Andrew Garfield, when he puts on the mask, I don't see an actor. I see a new Spider-Man. Both of these actors do a great job in portraying their characters, just Andrew Garfield a little bit more because Andrew Garfield has that more of the smart aleck attitude because Spider-Man doesn't really crack many jokes in the Sam Raimi series. The only joke that I know that he play that he makes is, um, uh, like for example, uh, there's a scene in the movie where he's like, it's you who's out, Gobby, out of your mind. But now see, the way how McGuire says it, it, it doesn't really sound like more of a smart oak. Like if, if he had said, when Goblin was like, are you in or are you out? And if he had said, Jews out, Gobby, out of your freaking mind. If he had made the joke kind of more of a smart alecky, then I would, I, would, I would have been okay. But the fact of the matter is that with Andrew Garfield, when it comes to being Spider-Man, is more of a smart aleck like he's supposed to be. And that's where Andrew Garfield kind of beats Tobey Maguire. But... With this film, they captured a lot of things right, especially the rivalry kind of between Harry and Peter. Harry gets with Mary Jane after they graduate, and he says to Peter, he's like, look, man, I should have told you that me and her got together. It's just, you never made a move, and I did, and I've got her now. And, and Peter even admits, he's like, you know what, you're right, I didn't make a move. And this doesn't affect their friendship. But the more Harry... The more serious Harry gets with Mary Jane, the more, I guess you could say, she drifts to Peter, I guess you could say. Because before the movie ends, she talks about there's always been one person who's been there for me. And then, of course, you know, for those who have seen the movie, you know what happens. And Harry walks in one day when uh, his Aunt May uh, gets attacked and she's put in the hospital. And they're talking about how Spider-Man has saved MJ's life twice and how she has a crush on him. And, you know, they do... This film does so many things right. I know that I have said that, but it really does. They capture the fact that Peter is Spider-Man's photographer. Peter works at the Daily Bugle. The best thing about this movie... Like, the my favorite... My favorite part... My, my favorite actor of the Spider-Man films is... Uh, let me get back. Let me see if I can get back to it. Uh, the person who plays freaking J. Jonah Jameson, J.K. Simmons. He 
is perfect for this role. He is the most perfect character in this movie. He loved this character so much that apparently he was wanting to play Jameson in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. But unfortunately, we never got we're never going to get a third movie. So we may we might see him back in um, back as J. Jonah Jameson. We might see Tobey Maguire back as Spider-Man. There's rumors going around that he may return as Spider-Man. Um. But this is a very good comic book film. I say it it's faithful to its adaptation. It, it's really faithful in my personal opinion. And you know, I I strongly do recommend that you pick up this film. The reasons why, and this is the reason why I love this film so much. And I actually got quite obsessed with it, actually. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Um I got so obsessed with this movie and it has a special place in my heart with this. And my roommate just walked in. Um, the reason why I love this Spider-Man movie so much is because my dad took me to watch it. Because, hi TJ, don't shake your head at me. Um, they all know I'm right. <laughs> love you too. This movie has a special place in my heart because my dad and I don't really get to do much together. And so the fact that whenever me and my dad go watch a movie, it's always... It means something really special to me. And the fact that Dad took me to watch my favorite superhero in the Marvel Universe. It, it just, this movie really means a lot to me. And I think they got a lot of actors that did a really good job. Don't laugh at me. Um, but, like I said, they got a lot of things right in this movie. The fact that they, the one thing that I do like that they got was the fact that Harry is always trying to please his father and his father really never has has time for him. But when Peter comes into the picture, Norman starts spending trying to spend more time with Peter or helping Peter more. And Harry starts to get a little upset, just like how it goes in the TV shows and the comics. That's Norman always wants to be there for Peter, but he's barely there for Harry. And they, I think they captured this really well. James Franco is such a good Harry Osborn. He really, he owns that character. He owns that role. And especially what he does in Spider-Man 2, James Franco is such a good actor, and I think he was perfect for this role. Now, with Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I really don't think her and Tobey Maguire have any chemistry. Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone had such good chemistry not just because of uh the characters they were playing but the i think it's also the fact that they were that they're dating each other in real life but if you really if you like spider-man as much as i do i don't know if if you all do i strongly suggest give this film a watch or watch the amazing spider-man in my personal opinion they're equal even though one is adapted differently just like a bunch of other remakes are but guys, this has been another episode of Nostalgic Videos. Put in the comments below, what do you think of the very first Spider-Man movie that I know that they've made? I don't know if there was one before this. There might have been. But this is, a, I think this is a very good film, and I strongly suggest checking it out. Guys, have a good day.